It sounds like something's shaking. Yeah, there was something more shaking. It was something on me. Maybe the zipper thingy? Yeah, it was this. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard that too. Oh, I was going to get on air and start bitching and complaining about, like, I think it's, I think this is my shoulder, like, area, like, right yeah, here. That's your shoulder, yeah. Like, shoulder could be, like, here. That's trap. Okay, like, yeah, like, the front part here. Mm-hmm. OD killing me. Like, how it, did you hurt it? I don't know. And I'm, it's just mad random. It, it might, like, it was the middle of the day. I don't know what I was doing, but all of a sudden I just lifted my arm and the shit was like killing. Like, it, like, really hurts when I sort of like just like move it around and shit like that. Like, I could raise my arm, but like, if I go like that, it's in pain. And then. <laughs> So I was going to start bitching OD about it. Molly had no sympathy for me. She was like, she wouldn't even let me like complain when I put my arm up. And then my backdrop fell. So Molly's mad good at like hanging the shit. She came downstairs and was going sort of slow with hanging it. I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, I've been holding out for seven months to get like shoulder surgery and I can't lift my arm. And I, yo, I was like, fuck. Because I was complaining about it the whole night. <laughs> so now I'm like, I feel like such a dick. That is such, that's such a story that's like, just perfectly encapsulates you and her and your marriage. It's like, you got like a little bit of pain for like one day and you're like. No, it was her mom. Her mom was putting the shit up. Oh, okay. Her mom did it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's so funny though. So she was like looking at you as you're talking about your shoulder like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like. I don't but like it's just weird because I don't know if I slept wrong or what I did, but like just randomly at any like at like three thirty five, my arm was just like, we're going to fuck up your whole night and potentially the rest of this week with whatever we're about to just put into your shoulder. Yo, that just might be part of getting older, like just having these little aches and pains that pop up out of nowhere where you're like, wait, what? But then there's some people like LeBron James or like a 44 year old person who's like just good and doesn't yeah, have that shit happen. In the LeBron example, he's actually a good example of like he he does everything he possibly can to make sure he's good. Like he's on a super strict diet. He's got like a hyperbaric chamber that he goes in for recovery. He sleeps like 10 hours a night, allegedly. So like he does every little thing that he can to make sure that he's in good shape. He probably ices after every single game, like yeah, but, to look out for the imp- inflammation. But, but we like, live a life, we live a normal life that like our body should be able to just take whatever is thrown at us until we're like 64. Like 31 with the shit that I do, I shouldn't start like having back problems. And like, I like you, a body should be created equally across the board where You could pick up babies. You can like, you could do bad exercising up until you're like 60 without really fucking your shit up. Like when people have back problems in their 60s and 70s and they're like, yeah, this is chronic. I've had this since I'm 30. That shouldn't be a thing. Like our bodies should be durable enough to like fucking like do some fucked up shit and, and withstand that shit. Like LeBron's body should be breaking down. Like he, like he shouldn't be the poster child of like a good body. It, okay, so it's funny that we're talking about this. My buddy Brian, he, I don't know if you know this, but he like, so first of all, he he golfs a lot like I do, right? Mm-hmm. And but he hurt his back years ago, and I kid you not, Corin, he would bring it up. Like I would ask him a year after it happened, like, yo, you want to go play some golf? And he'd be like, I can't, my back's messed up. And I'm like, that happened a year ago, bro. Like, what do you mean? And so I kid you not, it literally took like four or five years. And he like had re-injured it at one point when he went to go pick up like some luggage, but he turned in a weird way, he said. And then he just felt it immediately. Like his back was just like, like it just totally crapped out on him. Mm -hmm. But after, but he said after like three, probably three, four, or maybe even five years, all the, I think it's probably closer to four, it finally, like, just went away. But to me, like, the idea of, like, a nagging injury like that, oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Because it's like, and, and I, I always tell 
everybody this that whenever some whenever something happens, like I get hurt or I get sick or whatever, my thought always immediately is like, just yesterday I was good. Like <laughs> imagine I didn't have this problem. Like yeah. I just, it, it's like I want to appreciate the moment of not being hurt and not being sick because if it happens, I'm gonna be like, damn. Why did I take for granted that my left leg worked? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and, and I never like, used to do that. But also let people who are injured, and I'm talking to my wife here, fucking bitch about that shit. Like, she's like, I don't want to hear you complaining. I don't want to hear you moaning and shit. Like, that shit hurts. Like, let people fucking complain about that shit. Like, what if this never goes away? Like, what if if I was a baseball player, I would need a cortisone shot in my shit right now. I wouldn't What's be able surgery? to like hit. Tommy John surgery or I something. I would need Tommy John surgery right now. In my That's shit. not. Isn't it the elbow the Tommy John thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the elbow. <laughs> but it's, it's weird how like there's a poster child for every like big ass surgery. Like it's it almost sucks to be Tommy John because like it's sort of G in a way because now every time <laughs> someone dude. gets that shit. But, like, there's a Tommy John out there. So every time they report about that shit on, like, <laughs> he's MLB, like, they're like, they yeah, got my like, shit. <laughs> he's like, like, that guy must have the most fucking PTSD because every time he hears Tommy John, like, that's him. Like, what else is there? There's fucking Lou Gehrig's disease. Like, his family must hate hearing that shit. Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah, and then the Heimlich. Shout out New Rochelle High School. Like, um... Yeah, they name stuff either after somebody who had it or after the place where it comes from. Like Lyme's yeah. disease is from a place called Lyme. Yeah. I think it's in Connecticut. It might be Connecticut. I think it is. That's crazy. Um, but it's it's like, I wonder if he makes, he, you think he makes any money off of that shit? No way. No. Like, ro- fucking Seinfeld and all these TV shows get royalty every time like that shit plays on TV. That's a TV show. It's not a no, disease. But, <laughs> yeah, but people copyright like sayings and like trademark shit. If he you just trademarked his no, name, you can't trademark the name of a disease. But it's not like it's not like a real disease. It was just like trademarked Tommy John. You know, like it was coined that. So he, yeah, like, all his dad began to get money off of that. He was like the first prominent person to have it or first notable person to have it. And so they just named it after him. But what are you going to do? You're going to pay him every time a doctor says it to a patient like, oh, you have Tommy John surgery. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, every time they like talk about it on national TV or some shit like that, that's his. He could if Tommy John listens to this podcast, I should almost I should be a fucking lawyer because like, well, that's not going to happen that's not even close to how it works you made me well you didn't make me it was actually really interesting but we watched this thing on netflix that was um about like media and stuff like that Mm -hmm. you could build a case around tommy john having to live his life for 30 something years being like upset and depressed about people saying like a career ending surgery that he He has to relive every time he would lose that case just like in that show they lost that case so we'll tell everybody what we're talking about here yeah, but then it got overturned on appeal, so they lost. Here's why I think it got overturned, and I said this shit to Molly. Because of the First Amendment, because of free speech. That's what they said. I think it was partially that and partially on the lower-level court system. I think a lot of the time you get fair rulings because the judge is actually like, you know, you know, th- there's people on the jury that actually are paying attention to the case and this and that. But once it goes to, like, federal and all this shit, then Warner Brothers got involved. And, like, who's to say that, like, they don't have corporate lawyers that know, you know, people in the government that could sway them a certain way? Because, like, it was a hefty payout. And, like, they don't know a local uh, Michigan judge compared to, like, on a higher level where politicians all are shaking each other's hands and shit, you know? So let's explain this for everybody. Now, the show is called Trial by Media. It's on Netflix. Spoiler alert for everybody. This is the first episode of it. You know, if you don't want to hear this, skip ahead like five minutes, okay? But let me break this down for everybody. So, there's a show, Jenny Jones. Corn used to watch it. Yeah, that was um, my shit. And on Jenny Jones, they did this um, segment where they invited on a dude, told the dude, somebody has a crush on you and they're going to reveal it on the show. And he was like, okay, so I'll come on the show. So, he goes on the show. It turns out the person that has a crush on him is this dude that he knows. 
this dude who's a friend of a friend who he's met before. Mm -hmm. Now, he's laughing and, like, supposedly just, like, having a good time with it or whatever and just brushing it off. But he tells the audience, like, I'm heterosexual, I'm not gay yeah. or whatever. It looked like he handled it well in the moment. Mm -hmm. But what happened is, like, within a week, he had went, bought a gun, drove to the dude's house, and killed him. And... I don't know, like, it's a little bit up in the air as to what the exact reason was. Like, was yeah. it just the fact that, you know... I think they got gay. into an altercation. Like, they got into an altercation. Something happened that, that's yeah. more than... It wasn't just, like, he's gay, I'm gonna kill him. It was, like, that plus something else that they don't really go into. But either yeah. way, he murdered the guy. Yeah. And then what happened was, there was a lawsuit from the family of the guy who was killed. They sued the Jenny Jones show... And so, you know, whatever network it was part of at the time, mm -hmm. they sued them and it went, it didn't go to a criminal trial, went to what's called a civil trial and they were suing for millions of dollars. Like the fan, like the only reason our, you know, our family member was murdered is because the Jenny Jones show set up this segment and they embarrassed this dude on, on live TV. And then that dude got revenge. So if it wasn't for Jenny Jones setting this all up then our family member would still be alive. And like Corn saying, the the initial trial, they actually ruled against the Jenny Jones show and for the family, and they got, what was it, like $26 million or something? It was like was 30, the... $35 million or something yeah. like that. So, but then what happened was they appealed the case, and on the first appeal, the case got overturned, and the reason it got overturned was, and this was a conversation we were kind of having at the time, and I was having with somebody else as well, you can... Like, they're not legally responsible because they have no idea that this dude is going to go crazy and kill this person. Mm -hmm. Like, they have no idea. Now, we could have a conversation about whether or not they're ethically responsible and whether or not this is the kind of show they should be doing and if it's dangerous to do in the first place. Like, those are all legitimate questions to have. But the idea that you can punish them legally for doing this show, when the, it just takes away agency from the dude who made the decision to go and kill the guy. Like, yeah, you could say it was a messed up situation, but they had no idea he was going to murder him. So you can't hold them responsible for that. So anyway, it got overturned because of the first amendment, because they're like, no, they had the, it, it's basically free speech to set up the show as they set up the show and have it unfold. And they're not responsible for the actions that somebody decided to take as a result of that. Only that person mm -hmm. is responsible for those actions. So, and mm -hmm. that's the thing, like it would be a slippery slope. If you punished that dude, it, I'm sorry, if you said, yes, Jenny Jones show is guilty in that situation, then you could have all these crimes that are like a step removed from the person who actually commits the crime. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody I was triggered by this newspaper article that made me. Yeah. Do or that. yeah. If, if somebody is a bad mother or father and then the kid goes and commits a crime and the kid argues in court like, well, it's really my mom and dad's fault because they had the, set up this environment that made me how I am. Like, okay, is, are they legally responsible for the crimes being committed? No. You could say maybe they're ethically responsible and they should have done things differently, but they're not legally responsible. Yeah. No, it's a good point. And I mean, like, that, you see that a lot now with, with Trump. You know, everyone points fingers at Trump for people, you know, being racist. Like, yes, he contributes to, like, people being, uh, like, louder about being racist and all this shit that's going on now. But the underlining theme of all this was like it was there before, you know, some this guy. To get to that level of buying a gun, you still got to be a little bit crazy, you know, obviously, like they were on Jenny Jones for a reason, like they were from a like a lower like they weren't they were poor like people. Um, so like there's there's factors that lead into it outside of just jenny jones or like trump or somebody bringing these people to the forefront but i mean like they do play a factor in it so like there should be some accountability towards that because like if they didn't like trigger that in people you know it potentially doesn't happen so it's like there is a weird balance and that's why like the same thing with um like the O.J. Simpson case, he didn't he lost the murder trial. He was like not guilty. But then there was a civil trial where he still had to pay money because he was like responsible for whatever. I don't know what they deemed him responsible for, but like he still had to pay some money. So like there should be almost like a fine or a slap on the wrist to like these shows 
of like, yeah, you could do your thing, but keep it within a certain limit, you know, like. I, I don't agree with that because it's so easy for people to just like misinterpret stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Jenny Jones could argue and did argue like we it was all in good fun. Like he was laughing. Everybody in the audience was laughing. We thought it'd be funny. It's something to put on in, on daytime TV. It's lighthearted. Like, OK, so a gay dude is attracted to this dude who he doesn't know if he's gay or not. And it turns out he's straight. Ha ha he he like. There are it, things can be misinterpreted so easy. So to to blame them for it, it's like they had no idea. And in their mind, it was something totally different. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like yeah. it's like me and my show. Like I can scream about, you know, like we got to end these wars. These wars are terrible. These wars are evil. George W. Bush is a war criminal. And then am I responsible if somebody insane person who watches me goes and tries to do something hurt George W. Bush physically? Am I responsible? No, because I I never would ever. And that gets to the point, which is there are instances where people are legally responsible, but those instances are like super direct threats of violence and super direct incitement of violence. So like if you say, you know, I want you to go and murder this person at 430. This is their name. This is their address. This is what their routine is. And then they do it. Then it's like, oh, well, uh, yeah, like, obviously you're responsible for this. But if it's like sufficiently vague, then of course not. Then you're off the hook. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I guess you're right. I just, I look at it. I looked at it almost just like big picture. Someone snapshot that. I know. Um, (laughs) as like i looked at it in a corporate picture where it's like they went to the federal um judicial system and it was almost just like all those guys at the high levels at warner brothers probably had lawyers that like i just i don't i don't have any faith in our political system now and i can't imagine what it was like back in the day where like you know these corporations have so much power and influence over you know, things that happen with their uh, organizations, whether it's just like sweeping shit under the rug um, or like cover ups that they threw that case out because, you know, Warner Brothers didn't want to pay thirty five million dollars. But like you make a fair point where, you know, they shouldn't be responsible for that. But like I, it just goes to the bigger picture of I don't trust anything in our political system. I don't know why people like I, I I'm I'm still fascinated that people still have the energy to even fight about shit that goes on in politics anymore because it's like the fact that people still care and think that other politicians are fighting for you and give a shit about you like even ones who are like who say they're good and like are gonna fight for you and all this shit like deep down they're not gonna fucking help you I just Um, honestly think nobody's out to help us anymore like every it's like on some every man for their own type of shit all right, so to get back to one of the first things you said there, I think the thing that annoys you is the power dynamic situation. Yeah. Like, yeah, you look at the, you know, you look at the big corporation and you're almost like, really? Like, you don't think you're responsible at all for this? Like, come on. And mm-hmm. then you're right that they have the ability to get the best lawyers in the world. And if you can afford the best lawyers in the world, you can get away with almost anything. Yeah. Like, legit, almost anything. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that that's, I think, the thing that frustrates you. Um, And as far as like the politician thing you said. Yeah, man, I mean, even even the politicians who I think mean well and agree with me on stuff, they're cucks like they're super weak and it's sad. Did did Bernie even recently like sort of do something that because I saw Justin Jackson put something like. You know, even Bernie or something like that. Like, yeah, he stays disappointing in many ways. Like he tweeted some something about like, I want to thank Nancy Pelosi for this or this, and everybody's like, "Yo, she's part of the problem. Like yeah. she is responsible just as much as the Republicans are for that horrendous uh, coronavirus bailout bill, where like all the money went to corporations and the rich, and like and Bernie voted for it, and Bernie's thanking Pelosi. It's like, damn man, like." I, again, I would never question Bernie's intentions. Like, yeah. I think he's a good dude. He means well. He's trying his best. But, I I mean, when push comes to shove, he's just way more of a party loyalist than I am. Like, he's just super, like, I will ultimately fall in line and be like, a party. What does he man. have to lose to, like, I mean. I'll tell you what it is. Have, 
influence over the Democratic Party and stuff like that. But who gives a shit? He's like 70 whatever. Well, he actually said it at one point way back in the day. He doesn't want to end up like Ralph Nader. And Ralph Nader was the guy who he ran like a third party uh, race. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who blame him for George W. Bush getting elected because, you know, it was like John Kerry. No, I'm sorry. Al Gore, George W. Bush and Ralph Nader. And they say like all the votes that went to Ralph Nader, if they had gone to Gore, Gore would have won the election. So basically Ralph Nader is this guy who, who has a great ideology and means really well, but he's wrongly like accused of giving us George W. Bush. So in the case of Bernie, he, I think he feels like if I don't fall in line, if I don't back the Democrats, if I don't do everything that I can to try to get Biden elected, I'm 100% going to be blamed for Biden's loss. And I'm going to be looked at like Ralph Nader, like I caused the second term of Trump. That's what I think he's thinking. But I, I, but I honestly, I think that's like, that's so weak because it's like, Super no, dude, weak. you were never responsible for Trump winning. Not the first time. This time, you you won't be responsible for it. If Biden loses, that's on Biden. Like, But, but he's going to get blamed for it anyway. <laughs> exactly. And that's the most important point, which is no matter what the hell happens, he's going to get bl blamed for it. If, if Biden wins, Bernie will get none of the credit. If yep. Biden loses, Bernie will get all of the blame. Yep. And like he's running around like a little cuck trying to please like Nancy Pelosi and all these Democrats and Joe Biden and all of them. And it's like, you're don't ruin your own good name. Like the reason why you are so impressive and so many of us like you is because you were willing to stand up from time to time and go against the tide and say, like with the Iraq war, no, I'm not for the Iraq war as your entire party was buckling to Republicans. It's like, don't in the final years of you doing this job, don't do that. Don't become like that party loyalist hack because we all see through it. And all the stuff he says where he's like trying to get his people to vote Biden. And it's just like, come on, man. Like, I get it that you're going to vote for him. Like, I get it. But just don't. And even if you want to make the case for Biden, that's fine. But don't BS us. Yeah. Don't BS us. I say it all the time. Don't serve me a plate of crap and then tell me it's a fudge brownie. It's just not. I would probably eat that shit, though, low key. <laughs> <laughs> I love my fudge brownies. I was eating healthy, OD, and then I just saw the. Uh, we had one box left in our cabinet. And like I said before, Molly's mother, my mother in law, makes a fudge brownie that I, no, one, no one can compare with that shit. Like she turns the pan in the oven and, like, the cert, like at the perfect time, it's like, I think it's Duncan Hines. And it comes with like this fudge shit that like you put inside of it. Oh, so, so it all it like makes it extra fudgy. Oh, and she like she's got it down to a science where she'll cook it for like 22 minutes and then like rotate it. But then also like test it real quick. Like it's like a fucking science experiment. Like she's like cooking up some meth or yeah, some shit. She like, uses the toothpick. She puts the toothpick in to test it. The toothpick shit, but that like she knows that it's not going to be right, but she's using the toothpick just to like get some intel to like make it better. Like it's it's amazing to watch. It's on some like Jordan level brownie making shit. Like <laughs> anyone who's like super good at their craft, like to discover that you have a talent at some shit is almost like a talent within itself. Like they had on I've I've seen on social media recently. I don't know if they're doing it live again now. Probably not. But it was the um, ESPN might have covered it. It was the slapping each other in the face shit. Have you ever seen that? No, uh, no, I don't think I have. It was like two guys and they like hold on like they're about to do like a uh, uh, arm wrestling shit, mm -hmm. and they'll just slap each other in the face. And then the other guy, it's like these big burly guys like with beards and everything. The other guy will just smack him in the face like. How do you figure out that you have these fucking talents? Like, did that guy get into an argument who wins? with his wife? Are you, do you have to be the person who doesn't get knocked out? Is that how yeah, you win? I, no, I think that's what it is. I think they have people Come standing on. to the sides of them, and they, like, catch them. Dude, you have to, like, watch this when you're done. The amount of force that they slap each other in the face with is some next-level shit. Like, They're going to get concussions, man. That's not safe. <laughs> You're There's get like UFC and like boxing and shit like that. Like this. Is Honestly, this level. sounds like even worse because you're just repeatedly getting clonked in the head and you can't even play defense. It's like some guys just have like different set like 
like how LeBron James is built differently from me and you. There's guys that are built differently that can just do like lumberjack shit and like lumberjack, just like weird like hiking shit. Whose hands are just like built like a like a like a beefy like cow or some <laughs> shit. You know, like what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying, but like eventually it's gonna catch up to them if they keep getting freaking concussions. Like you can't keep getting concussions like that. You, it's amazing. They. So what it looks like when you watch it at normal speed is just like a very aggressive slap. Slow then, motion, it probably looks bad. That's what I'm saying. They have a slow-mo cam, obviously, Oof. because it's like the world championships of slap in the face. And their face goes like boing, 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 but boing. But like, boing. why why is this something that's happening a lot during COVID-19? Because like, it's not safer than other stuff. They're mad close to each other. They're hitting each other with their hands. Like that's more dirty than most sports that are not on right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's live, but for some What's it reason, called? does it have a name? Face slapping championships. Nah, I don't know. There's got to be a name to it, right? I don't know, but my point is, if you're very good at something, like <laughs> that's impressive because to the fact to figure that out, like. She's identified she's really good at making brownies. So I asked Molly, I was like, I don't want to ask your mom, but I sort of want, like, I'm sort of craving some fudgy ass brownies. She was like, just make the shits yourself. I was like, honestly, like, she knows the amount of times to whisk the shit in the fucking bowl. Like, you would definitely mess it up. You would definitely yeah, mess it up. I would like, make a me, brownie, but it wouldn't be I as make, good as. Yeah, exactly. You would, it wouldn't be like, I made a steak. The other day and like i had my freaking fire alarm going off <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying like, but there's someone out there who yeah, makes the best steak of course yeah but if you did that shit 40 more times like you'd still actually unless you're told to like adjust something you'll probably keep fucking it up like are you gonna 100%. make an adjustment next time yeah i'm gonna like open a window or something <laughs> To let the smoke go out. <laughs> but you don't even like the steak I get. I like I like like a thinner steak. And so you don't even have to cook it that long because even to make it like medium rare, which is how I like it, you only need like 30 seconds or a minute on each side if you're cooking it in the pan. Yeah. No, um, there was a science to all that shit. You're right about the steak. Like I was cooking a steak my first time and I asked my stepfather like some advice. And he was like, when you flip it over, flip it sideways and then the other way so you get like a nice charring on it both ways which like i would have never done i would have just flipped it like normally yeah. mm -hmm. but um i started buying these pub burgers from the supermarket now and they're thick as fuck so like it takes ma and i've been grilling a lot lately it take them it's got to take a while right the thick ones. Be long yeah but here's yeah. my thing I, I would always put the heat on too high Mm -hmm. so the outside of the burger would get mad like well done and it would sort of fake me out like it was cooked but the inside was always mad bloody so now i was i learned that you got to put the heat on low and let that shit just chill in there for a while. yeah 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 no like they most things there, there will be directions like you got to try it this way don't you can't keep the heat up and yeah, yeah I, I understand what you're saying but to get back to the you were talking about being mad good at stuff you you finished the documentary? You finished the Michael Jordan documentary? Yeah, all done. Yeah, me too. I just I just saw an article that Horace Grant is pissed at uh, yeah. at Michael Michael Jordan. He was like he was saying lie 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 like the the thing is full of lies. He was salty, but like at the end of the day, everyone coming at Jordan right now, like they're all like this is their time to you know, get on ESPN. Obviously, Horace Grant doesn't really need too much limelight, you know, because I think he works with the Bulls. He's probably still got a couple mil in the bank. Oh, he's but like, fine why, financially. Yeah. But, like, there was a guy, Craig Hodges, who played with Jordan, like, way, way back in the day, and he was one of the guys who Jordan said, like, um, you know, he walked into the hotel room and they were all drinking and smoking and partying, and Jordan was the only one not doing it. So Craig Hodges, like, went on ESPN and was upset, but, like, at the end of the day, Jordan's not phased by any of this shit. You know, like, he doesn't care. Like, he's well, done his career. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, it's interesting because, like, Charles, Charles Barkley has a, a story about why they're not, like, friends anymore. And it's actually kind of sad because they used to be, like, really close. Really, mm -hmm. really close. And then it was Charles Barkley went on NBA on TNT back in the day. 
and he said something like, you know, Michael's going to keep making bad business decisions because he surrounds his, surrounds himself with kiss asses. Mm-hmm. He said something like that. Um, and Mike, like, apparently, like, texted him a zillion times. It was like, you know, F off and everything. And and Char- Charles Barkley was like, ever since then, he just doesn't talk to me anymore. And I was like, damn, really? Like, Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. You Like, why would he get pissed about something like that? It's so whatever. Like, that's... Who cares? Who cares what he says about the people you surround yourself with or whatever? But apparently he's like really thin skin like that. Like he doesn't mess around. He's very thin skin and he's also very protective of just like his image, his brand and like, I guess, anything that's said about him. I remember there was like a local grocery store that used his image or something like that in one of their ads, like some local ass grocery store. And he sued them for like millions of dollars because they used his image or like a slogan or some shit in their ad. That's not cool. That's not cool. It's not cool, but at the end of the day, like, like he his business, like his thinking is on some next level shit, like something that we'll never comprehend, you know. So to be at that level is on that, some like that's just greedy. That's just greedy. That's not like he's on a higher intelligence level or whatever. That's him being too greedy. Like, dude, you're set. You're Michael Jordan. You got your. He's a billionaire, right? Isn't he a billionaire? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a billionaire. Who but cares? it goes to that. It goes to that point that we had in the earlier conversation. If he lets that grocery store run with it, then another thing. Now, we'll say, I'm, I'm not buying work. this. I'm not buying the slippery slope argument because no. technically, like, yeah, listen, for, for what I do with my show, you know, there are people who are patent trolls and like they will look if a little piece of their thing gets on somebody else's channel, they'll just like flag it and take the video down, like do a yeah. copyright strike, whatever. Whereas I try to be lenient with it. If somebody wants to criticize me and use a little clip or whatever, go right ahead. Yeah. Because there's just some things that are like basic decency. Like it's not that serious. Like let it go, dude. Yeah. Especially like he's got he's got his brand. He's one of the greatest athletes of all time. Like, come on, man. You know, you don't destroy a small grocery store because they decided to use your your image. Yeah, that one's a little fucked up. I, I mean, I will just say overall about the doc, I thought it was great. It was like oh, captivating. It's definitely good. And there were was moments so... really humanized him in a way that that had never happened before. Like the thing about the security guard, Gus. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, like Michael Jordan's father was killed and like he really loved his dad and missed his dad. And this security guard who was a retired police officer um, who always looked after Michael, like his job was to be a protector. Basically, he kind of became like a de facto father figure. For Michael Jordan. And mm-hmm. Michael Jordan would call him at like 2 a.m. crying because he missed his dad or whatever. And the dude would be there for him. And then yeah. when this dude got sick and he had cancer, Michael always showed up and went to the hospital. I don't know if they said, did they say that he paid his bills? Did he uh, pay his? They didn't say anything about the bills, but I'm sure okay. he helped out in some form or fashion, you know? Yeah. No, and nobody knew that until this documentary. Just like nobody knew, by the way, that the flu game is, was not the flu. It was food poisoning. Yeah, that one I'm also a little skeptical about, too. So I, I follow this guy on Twitter who's like just he's got funny takes and sort of pushes the limits and investigates things a little bit more. He was a little weary that like Michael Jordan's, you know, the only one to eat the pizza. Five delivery men are delivering pizza and he ordered it under his name. Like, it's just like I everything they went doesn't to the pizzeria. Add no, no, they had five delivery guys deliver the pizza to his hotel room. Oh, I thought they said they went in. No, the trainer trainer said that they had five guys show up to the door and they were peeking in and stuff like he was, that. Wait, so what's his conspiracy? Because he was definitely sick. He wasn't faking being sick. So, I mean, there's stories that maybe he was out partying, he was hungover. It could have been on some Rodman type shit where he well, flew to Vegas the night before. Well, that's the, I was going to say the interesting thing is that he did like, he loves to drink and he loves to smoke his cigars. And like, he was smoking cigars as he was a player. Like, as- yeah, they said he smoked like every, every game. And, and they showed in the dock when they went down 0-2 to the Knicks, I think it was in 90, uh, 93 or something like that. He drove up to AC and spent the night there. And this was before he was Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. Like, he was Michael Jordan. Yeah, he so gambled with his dad. Mm-hmm. He's not going to be on some, like, I'm um, the king type shit and like, be like, let me get a private jet chartered to Vegas. Let me wild out 
we're gonna beat this. We're gonna I, beat. He didn't the Jazz. go to. He didn't go to Vegas in the middle of that. But I don't. The idea that maybe he was like hung over or something. I don't think that's crazy. Um, but I do think he was sick. He had something was going on. That's for sure. But the thing about like everybody flipping out over his gambling, like that was so stupid. I mean, he probably does gamble a lot of money. I'm sure he gambles a lot of money, but like somebody said in the documentary, dude has like all the money in the world. And if he gambles $10,000 on a round of golf, that's like me or you gambling $20 worth. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a good point. And like, who the fuck are we to say what he does with his money? You know, so it's like all these people acting like fatherly and motherly, like you shouldn't be gambling. What happens when you hit a certain point of fame? Like Michael Jordan was so famous and on top of the world, people just want to hear anything about that person. It doesn't Mm -hmm. matter what it is. Like anything, give me anything about them. Mm -hmm. And like, so they made this a story, something that he does in his free time that he enjoys doing. He's ultra competitive and gambling like goes hand in hand with that in a way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so they blew it up. Like, oh my God, look at him, he gambles. It's like, I don't who cares he also you know takes a shit and does like other mad normal things like it's not that serious there are a lot of question marks that obviously I don't think they'll get too in depth in like an ESPN documentary but like well they totally dismissed the theory of his dad being killed because of his dad 100% yeah and And going to baseball and you don't just switch at the peak of your career to baseball and then all of a sudden like the middle of the season decides to come back to you you sort of believe that one you were like i could see that him losing his fire right didn't you say that and going to try um no you had brought up the thing about his dad and yeah. about maybe it had something to do with gambling debts and i just i didn't i don't know anything about it but it didn't sound unreasonable to me if somebody gets murdered it's like yeah, well, your dad is Michael Jordan, he, and he's driving back at 3 in the morning. Like, I'm pretty sure you have enough money where you could stop at a hotel. Like, you don't just fall asleep on the side of the road in South Carolina or some shit like that. Like, I'm sorry, I sort of didn't believe that 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 story. Anytime there's a murder that happens, like, they need to do a thorough investigation. It's not yeah. like a murder is not just dying of natural causes. It's not like his dad died of natural causes that he yeah. at a young age. His dad was murdered. So, yeah. like, you would think it's like, damn, we need answers. Like, I don't know. What are they trying to say? Carjacking gone wrong? Is that the argument they try to make? Yeah, I think that's was, like, was the argument. Um, okay. He was just, like, in, in the wrong place at the wrong time. But, again, I don't know. But outside of that, it was a cool, it was a cool insight into, you know, Jordan, who's always been pretty private. Um, like I said, the 90s nostalgia was just so, it was just cool to see all that shit, man. I love the behind the scenes stuff I think is amazing. And yeah, all the nineties stuff. I thought it was so cool. I just love those behind the scenes videos. Yeah. Seeing, seeing stuff that we look at now as just like so obsolete and like something that is just incomprehensible. Like you don't even, you can't even imagine it like an NBA player holding a big ass video camera to get, footage even when you see it at like the dunk contest when Shaq's holding like a a, a big ass shit you're like all that's done now on like an iPhone you know so like it just makes him look so silly you're like this guy has millions and millions of dollars but he's holding this big ass recorder to try and get some like VHS coverage that is probably nowhere to be found right now they did a really good job going through the teams too in it like Mm -hmm. they letting letting us know about the Indiana Pacers and Reggie Miller and like how good they were. And earlier on in the documentary talking about the bad boy Pistons that they had a really hard time and couldn't get over the top by like defeating them. Like they just kept losing and the way that they used to hack the hell out of Jordan. Like that was really interesting hearing (laughs) about that. Like how much they would just beat him up whenever he would drive. Like I really loved hearing about all the different teams. Oh, and young Jordan in the 1980s uh, up against uh, Larry Bird. And um and who was the other one? Larry Bird and who? On the Celtics? Oh, uh, well, Kevin McHale or... No, 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 not the white dude. It was Larry Bird and I forget who else. I don't know why I'm blanking on this. But anyway... Um, on the Celtics? Yeah, it was on the Celtics. He was, they not were Robert saying, Parrish. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's probably it. I think it was Parrish. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, they were like how Michael Jordan, he was... He got injured and he was sitting out for like half a season. He went back to his college or something and started balling 
when he should have been resting. Like he was playing basketball at his college when he should have been resting. Yeah. And then, so he works himself up like into shape and then he comes back, they put him on a minutes restriction. They, you know, like everybody was saying, if that was today, they would have made him not play the entire season. Yeah. But he came back, he like basically forced them to play him. And then he started winning games for the Bulls and got them into the playoffs. And then in the playoffs, he's, he dropped like 63 points or something crazy on Larry yeah. Bird and the Celtics, who were the biggest, baddest boys in town at the time. Yep. And like Larry Bird was like, we knew right then and there that this dude, he was like a rookie at the time. They yeah. were like, we knew that this dude, like he was going to own the league because the whole story is insane that to eat, to will your team into the playoffs and you're one person and he wasn't surrounded by anybody. Yeah. Like, people realize how hard that is. And, and they should have won that game too. There was a weird rule. So they were down by two. And what happened is he, there was a three point line, like I think implemented recently in like around that season. At the end of the game, he shot a three-pointer and got fouled. But the rule back then was if you shot a three and got fouled, you only got two free throws. So at the end of the game, he made both of those free throws, and they went to overtime that game, but they lost. If the oh. rule had made sense and was actually fucking what it should be, which it is today, you shoot a three, you get three free throws, they would have probably won the game. What? It would have been like a most epic game ever, but instead they lost the game. What was the series? Did they win games in the series? They didn't get swept, right? Um, they, I don't know if they got swept or not, but it. I mean, the Celtics were in the prime of like their Celticness then, so like it would have been really hard to dethrone them. But what I didn't know, Corin, and I'm I'm actually going to pull up the numbers right now because I think that this is just absolutely insane. Like I knew, of course, about the six rings and like all the stuff that happened in the '90s. I didn't know that 1980s Jordan, he was drafted in 1984. I didn't know that like 1980s Jordan, the argument against him was similar to the stuff that people say against Allen Iverson or, or Carmelo Anthony that like, yeah, he scores a lot of points, but he doesn't make the people around him better and he's never going to win anything. But that's what people used to say in the 1980s about him. Mm -hmm. But I want to give you, um, Listen to this, man. This is great. I've never seen numbers like this before in my life, okay? His rookie season averaged 28 points a game. Yeah, beast. Who does that? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, second year, he averaged 22 points. I think that may, may have been the year he was hurt, although I'm not sure. Ready for this? <laughs> this this is like, this is literally record here. 1986-1987, Michael Jordan averaged averaged 37 points a game. Yeah, beastly. That's in an era, too, where, like, teams were scoring 80 points a game. Yeah. I just, I don't want to take anything away from Michael Jordan. I just think he came to the NBA at the most perfect time, the most, like, opportunistic time for him to be marketed, to revive the league. So, like, everything was catered to him to be successful and be, you know, the person he is today. So like they were going to highlight him in every way they can. He was going to get every endorsement he can. Um, the league was going to maybe give him calls in his favor to win championships. Like the sports center ESPN era of like highlights and dunking because there were players before him that were dunking Daryl Dawkins, Julius Irving that like they get their due, but not to Jordan's extent because like there was so much, coverage and video and that's when like the media was exploding so like he came at the perfect time yes he was great he was amazing but like the reason everyone's enamored by him is because he was in an era that like is so highly just like you know focused on i think the hype is based on the performance i mean you enter the league and get 28 points in your first 20 points on average in your first season. Listen to this. I'll go through year by year. They were doing that though. No, like there Kareem wasn't. No, 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 no. 20. Well, Kareem Abdul Jabbar, that's old school, but he yeah, got, no, that's what I'm saying. There was old, like, he got, his respect. Was put, put he got his respect. Some people call him the goat Kareem. Yeah. So, but listen to this 28 hmm. points a game, 22 points a game on average. I'm going through the average of every year. 37, 35, 32, 33, 31, 30, 32, uh, 27, 30, uh, 29, 28, 22. Like, this is not like 
these this is unheard of. Even the best ever, like Kobe, never averaged thirty seven one season. Kobe never at, did it, and Kobe did everything. Yeah. What I find interesting is that, like, I can never imagine what it must be like to be a human being, to be like the same as everybody else. You 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 live, you breathe, you shit, you do everything else, but to almost be on some level where just like everyone just worships you. You know, like how, like, it's almost to a point where you need to find people around you to sort of keep you level headed. Like he needs that security guard who's just like a a Chicago cop that is in on like the grittiness and shit like that. Because it's like, how do you keep some sense of like normalcy? Like how you don't know what it's like to order a pizza, you know? So like if the shit was poisoned and it had a big piece of shit on it, you wouldn't know what a fucking pizza looked like because you never get it delivered, you know? So it's like, how do you how do you stay like grounded in that type of shit, you know? You can't. It's really, really, really hard for a guy like him to stay grounded. But the sense you got from watching the documentary is I actually thought he handled it well in terms of like all the attention that whenever he steps out of his hotel room, it's just nonstop like people coming up to him, people asking him for a picture, people asking for him to sign it. And I actually thought he was really good with like, he would sign the autographs. He would smile. He would talk to people. Like, I think he handled it really well, as well as anybody could possibly handle it. When every single second that you're out in public, people are on you. And like, that's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to be like mentally on that entire time. And he did it. He managed to do it. But you could tell, like, there was a scene where he's laying in his hotel room and he's smoking yeah. a cigar and he's watching TV. And he's like, he says something like, damn, man, it was so nice and peaceful in here until y'all walked in. And, like, he's laughing about it and stuff. But you could tell that Loki, he's like, I love just being alone in my hotel room and just chilling. Like, he's so he's happier out of the spotlight now that he's not in the spotlight every eight seconds anymore, you know? Yeah, I, and again, I cannot imagine what that is like to walk from a bus to your hotel room and just be swarmed with people. Um, you, you got a taste of it when you went to Politicon. People knew you. People would come up to you and talk. Well, no, to no, no. That's why I was just going to say, like, there's almost a point where, like, he deaded that one French dude who asked him for an autograph. You remember he was, like, miking him up, and he was like, can you sign this real quick? And Michael yeah, just you, looked at him. You said at the, at the very beginning that was, right? Like, the first yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, I remember you texting about it. But he must be on some, like, different level shit where, I mean, he understands everything around him. So, like, when the guy Scott Burrell had his friends from UConn come in, and the guy seemed, I think he was in a wheelchair, so he must have been in an accident or something, but he was a former player. And his buddy was like, hey, can you sign this? And he was like, I'm a collector, too. You know, like everyone like people at that level are aware of everything that's going on, you know. So, like, it was interesting to, like, see that because you think that, you know, you're just handing someone a a piece of paper or something like that, that they're just going to sign it and keep it moving. But they know every they know what their autograph like is worth on the open market and shit like that. It was just interesting to see um how aware he was of everything you know yeah um i don't know it reminds me of we were at we were at politicon and someone i came up to you i forgot what it was and they were like hey can you can you look at this or some shit and you just like signed his book or something like that and i was like yo no he just wanted you to like look at his his like i don't know what it was a book or something but you were in like a locked in mindset where other yeah, people were just been asking yeah, for autographs that you just assumed they had asked for an autograph. Yeah, that yeah, that exactly. Because everybody who hands me something wants me to sign it. It's not yeah. like you can't just like hit me with like read this or whatever in the middle in the middle of the day when I'm trying to walk through the hallway. That's not gonna happen. Like it uh, would it didn't register. Um, so I wanted to do some polls, but unfortunately, I don't think we'd get the answers in time. Uh-huh. Um. We could still do them. One of them is based off of when, one of the things you tweeted. Oh, what did uh, I say? This was a, like maybe a week or two ago. You said something about pancakes and waffles oh. and what, waffles what was it? Suck. Waffles suck. Whoa. Like, they don't suck. They sort of suck. Like <laughs> the, the only waffles that I could get down with are Eggos. Oh, Yo, you don't like the Belgian waffles? I thought you'd like Belgian. What's what's Belgian? Like the big ass thick joints? They're the thick, soft, fluffy ones. Nah, I'm not even really a fan. Like wow. when 
when a Holiday Inn Express or a hotel will just have the waffle machine maker, sort of fuck them because like those it, those things are a little overrated. I don't agree with you, bro. <laughs> the only <laughs> the only perfect waffle out there, and maybe someone can invent this shit, but the Eggo is the, is close. But you put the Eggo in the toaster Eggo's for a good amount of time. Perfect. No, no, Eggo's not perfect, but it, it could be. No, it can. <laughs> it's you toast it to the perfect amount. You take it out, and then here's what you do. I'm a, I'm gonna bless everybody right now. So take out notebooks, do whatever you got to do. Write down. Stop the video games for a second. All right. I'm gonna take you into my Eggo world. First, pancakes are way superior. But here's how an Eggo waffle can get close. Put it in the toaster oven. Let that shit get a little bit, you know, crispy. Not too crispy. That's still got to be a little bit soft. Take the shit out, lather up the whole ego with butter, let it fucking chill in there for a second, put your syrup on it, make sure there's a good and out, and here's what you do. You cut the left side of the shit, so you, it's not going to be rounded anymore. Cut the left side, cut the right side, cut the top, cut the bottom. Cut off all the round shit and just leave all the square middle fucking guts of the shit. That'll be the best bite of waffle you ever have in your life. You're going to eat that part of it anyway. It doesn't matter how you prep it. No, but the outside rounded shits are never good. They don't get they don't get cooked enough. Butter and syrup doesn't really get in them. All of the shit gravitates towards the middle and you have this like juicy, crunchy, buttery, syrupy bite that is just like fucking life-changing. Okay, there are so many things you said there that I'm just amazed by. Like uh <laughs> an ego waffle is like the perfect waffle or something. It's like <laughs> nowhere near. Tr- I've had waffles way better than ego. Like ego is the one that you get when it's like on some regular like morning routine. Got to make something real quick stuff. Like that's what ego waffle is. But if you get a banging waffle, you know, from like a restaurant from like IHOP, and you get a waffle and you put the syrup on it and the butter and it's like soft and fluffy. Oh my god! Like the Belgian, I like Belgian waffles. I'm surprised you don't because normally you agree with me on the whole bread debate, where it's like, do you like the 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 more like Italian bread that's a little harder, or do you like the softer French bread? You you agree with me that the French bread is just a thousand times yeah. better. Yeah, like it's the same thing for waffles. It's like you want a thin like hard one, or you want like a big soft fluffy one. It's almost like cotton candy, though, where it's just like fluffy. It's like it's not anything of substance. So a pancake, you could like mash like when I have no, no, no. Uh, we're not or together. We're not debating pancakes versus waffles. I agree. Pancakes are better. Okay, I think I think that's a no brainer. But the thing <laughs> but when you said Eggos are like the best waffle, I was like, oh, what? yo, sometimes. And I've said this before. The shit you don't like the simple shit. Like Manchu Wok, fucking all those Chinese spots, like their orange mandarin chicken, all of their like beef and like um the the string bean shit, the Mongolian beef. That shit at a gourmet restaurant would blow a fucking rich ass person's pants off. They would be like, This is what the fuck did the chef cook with? This is yeah, mad yeah, good. Yeah. No, I and hear like, you. No, a you're lot making of spots a good do that. Like they'll put on their menu like some cheap ass beer. And people don't want to order it because they want to order some sophisticated fucking blah, 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 gourmet, organic, oligo shit. But in reality, a fucking Corona Light is banging. Yeah, no, I hear you, and that's a good point. But Eggo waffles, in my opinion, are not the best waffles. <laughs> Those, I'm telling you, because you've good, never had— They're good, they're good. They're just not the best. But anyway— but Have you ever had what I'm talking about, where, like, the butter and syrup just fucking all gorge to the middle of your waffle? And that bite is just like life changing. Yeah, but I'm also I don't I feel like I never OD on butter or syrup. Like I'm always wow. like a little bit conservative with it with the butter and the syrup on that shit. You gotta wild out. With the syrup. I, yeah, I've seen I've seen your like syrup amount on stuff, and I'm like <laughs> that's ODing, man. Like that's a little too much for me. But anyway, the poll was gonna be pancakes versus waffles versus French toast versus I don't know the fourth one. That's why I'm bringing it up. Um, maybe what's this a crepe? Oh, crepe. That's right. Yeah, but that's, a, that's almost love. like a pancake with some stuff in the middle of it, right? That's basically what a crepe is. Yeah, that's yeah. it's just like a light, tur- it's like a super light pancake with some strawberries and shit in it. And they drizzle some chocolate on it. But I'm not a big crepe fan. Uh, you know, I'm not either. Like, I've only had them maybe three or four times in my entire life. 
Um, but is there anything else that pops in your mind when I list those things off? Mm-hmm. French toast is a good one because if you get a good like, if you get a good French toast, that could give. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I I think I put French toast above pancake. There's no way that waffle is anywhere close to either of those two. Because like I, I agree with you, but I do think it'll hold its own a little bit more than we're expecting. I do think that some people. I think because when just you has tweeted like that, that I saw stick. the responses, and there were a decent number of people like, "You're bugging. Waffles are better than pancakes." Yeah, like, you know what's crazy is I don't even ever check the results of the shit. Like, I'll I'll check it in the beginning to see where it's riding, but there will never be a time on Twitter where your poll's at, like, 62, whatever the other side is, 38, and then 38 will come back. So, like, if you could see the results of your poll, like, within the first 20 minutes. Oh, we could do... Oh, they could do minutes now. Oh, we're good. I'm going to... I'll set the poll for 30 minutes. That's butter. Before, we could only... You, back in the day, you had to do it by hours. I'll just do 30 minutes. All right, so I think I want to leave it blank then. Pancake versus waffle versus French toast, just the three, no? Yeah, three's fine, because whatever... Even if you put some other, there's nothing else that is on those that is on that like pedigree. Yeah. So and I agree. So and in my mind, I, me personally, I go French toast number one, pancake number two, waffle number three. But my prediction is it's going to be pancake number one. Don't even and, say waffle second. And then I think I think it'll be French toast number two, but I think it'll be surprisingly close between French toast and waffles. Yeah, I don't think French toast because there's no f- like. French toast house. There's a waffle house. There's a IHOP, but there's no like French toast. Oh shit. I just thought of a genius ass food chain restaurant we could start. French toast house? French toast factory. French toast factory. Yeah, that makes sense. Bro, there's a waffle house. There's an international house of pancakes. Let's start a fucking. Yo, if I ever become like a multimillionaire. I'm going to open up French Toast Factory. I wonder if there is a French Toast Factory somewhere. I never heard of it if there is. Anyway, I'm going to tweet it now. Um, pancake versus Waffle versus French Toast. And we're off. That's tweeted. All right, next. Um, the, the, here's the other one. You're going to like this poll. You're going to like this one a lot. Um, oh, there's a French Toast Factory in Taiwan, New Taipei City. <laughs> that's hilarious. So better, better dipping sauce. You ready? Mm-hmm. Catch up. Barbecue, honey mustard, ranch. Oh, you're not going to have sweet and sour on that bitch? That's so specific to McDonald's, which is why I lean more towards putting a ranch in there than sweet and sour. Yeah, ranch has a cult following. Like, there are some people who will, like, just, they'll get ranch, like, they'll get a ranch bottle dressing tattoo or some shit. Like, they... (laughs) Like ranch is on some next level shit. Like you'll you, ketchup. I don't even like ketchup has a following, like a cult following, but it's not on some ranch dressing level. Okay. Um, but I don't think ranch dressing following is that big enough to like move the needle on a, on a pole. Are you tell for you? What do you you probably like ketchup the best? Yeah, if it's a pole, ketchup is definitely number one. Um, it would go. No, what do you? What do you? What would you pick? What's your list? Oh, oh, like what I would put the choices as? What's yeah? What's your number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Oh, ketchup, barbecue, honey mustard, and then I and then ranch if those were the options. Yeah, I see. I'm a honey mustard dude. That literally is number one for me on that list. Number one. Number one for me. That's number one because the honey mustard. I would, oh, I have ketchup on more things, but yeah. I enjoy honey mustard more. Yeah, but then that comes into play is like, well, how are you factoring in it? Because like, if you put McDonald's sweet and sour on your fucking pole, I would put that shit one because when I have that, it's just like life changing. So I like sweet and sour. I don't love it like you love it. I think. You really love it, but the reason why I feel like I want to put ranch is because I think it'll actually hold its own more than sweet and sour in yeah, this poll. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm just saying, like, if I saw McDonald's sweet and sour sauce on your poll, I would almost be inclined to choose that because every time I do have that, it's a better experience than ketchup. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, so if yeah. I'm putting French fries in the McDonald's sweet and sour sauce, I think I enjoy it more than ketchup. So like, so it's, is it how much things the condiment can go on or is it? No, it's not how much much things the condiment can go on. It's what's better. It's what tastes better. It's always what tastes better. It also has to be, it has to be like flexible too though. Like Jordan played defense and offense, you know, like it wasn't just like ranch can only go on. I don't even know with chicken tenders. Like, what do you can't dip your French fries in ranch? Yeah, you can. You can do it. I mean, it's not a common thing, but you could definitely do it. There, there have definitely been times where I've been out of ketchup, and I'm like, I'll just put a little ranch on here and have For real. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, listen, if I'm listing, if I'm listing my favorite favorite in order, it's honey mustard number one, ketchup number two, ranch number three, barbecue number four. I'm not a big barbecue guy. You can almost do the, so. Yeah, that pole is like the straightforward pole, and then you can almost have a broken down pole. You don't have to put this up there, but there could be a pole for like Chick Fil A sauce versus McDonald's sweet and sour sauce versus like Burger King's barbecue sauce versus you know yeah, whoever's what, got some other banging I think sauce. We're the only people who really know like those sauces as well as we do because we're we have the diet of a child. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. For a second, I thought this shit low-key was like a heart attack because I've always heard if people that have a heart attack, it starts in like their arm. Yeah, like your arm goes numb or something. I've heard that too. So I was a little worried about that, but I think it's more of just like a pain than it is like a heart attack shit. But if if it is a heart attack, I'm sort of handling that shit pretty well. You, you're you not having a heart attack because it wouldn't be – it would be your whole arm would go numb, not your left shoulder hurting. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take a piss real quick. I'll be right back. You, in, you entertain the people and I'm going to tell you right now, and you might even matter of fact, while I'm gone, if you want to, you could do it. If you want to pull it up on your phone, mm-hmm. we got some surprising early results in this shit. Oh, like, it's this already is up? Like, yeah. Both the polls are up and already low key. We're, they're hitting us with like, it's the first democratic primary and like <laughs> Andrew Yang is in the lead or some shit. Like that's Damn, someone called me racist against waffles. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious all right i'll be right back damn all right so yeah pancakes are way like waffles i don't even know why people would have an argument for waffles was like i said the fluffiness is like it's like cotton candy it doesn't taste good all right let me give some shout outs um i don't even know how to pronounce you you what up oh Susie, happy birthday Susie's always day one loyal. Happy birthday. Um, what did I call you that one time? I think I said I said the wrong name and you got mad at me. Maddie, what's up? Um, mm, 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 mm. My man, Yairo, Yairo the Gyro. Day one guy. Um, I'm not going to talk about Kyle's pubes. Are patty melts burgers or grilled cheese? Anything grilled is sort of whack. Paninis are terrible. Um, ketchup goes on a lot of things. So if you don't like ketchup, then I sort of can't rock with you at all. Because ketchup is just like, ketchup is like the Nike of condiments. If you, if you don't like ketchup, then you're sort of bugging. Ketchup's almost like the Air Jordan of condiments. Like, there's no one that even comes close to it. Like, it's got its own little, which like, one? signatures. Which one is the Air Jordan? Ketchup. Heinz ketchup. Like, nothing's even close to that shit. Yeah, like, it's but got... no, no, no. So I'm going to say something somewhat controversial. Ketchup is like... Whoever the best role player of all time is. That's what ketchup is like. It's not Jordan. Jordan is like Jordan. He's the best of all time. Ketchup is not the best of all time. It's just the thing that's the most versatile. Ketchup is clearly the best of all time. Like ketchup is in every conversation. Like you go, you go barbecue shopping, you're getting some ketchup and mustard's up there too. Mustard's the Scotty Pippen of the shit. It's like (laughs) ketchup is fucking ketchup's the shit. M- mustard mustard is OD overrated. Regular mustard. 
But honey mustard is underrated. No, the yellow mustard is highly overrated. But OD like the overrated, the the golden brown shit that has like the that the, shit is overrated as nah, hell. You're fucking, that shit. What you? If you have a Nathan's hot dog and you put some Heinz on that shit and the golden brown mustard, not the like. If you ever look at the shelves, you gotta pay attention to what is like full on the shelf. The shit that's always full. Is that bright ass Big Bird looking ass yellow fucking mustard <laughs> shit? Okay, no that's one the one I'm thinking of. Though. I'm thinking of that one. That's the one that's overrated. Yeah. Oh, fuck that mustard. Like that <laughs> shit. The bottle looks fake as fuck. Yeah. I did. That's the mustard that like every time I've had it, I've been like, I don't know why people have this. <laughs> OD, like if anybody needs some rebranding shit, it's just like standard ass mustard. Like whoever makes mustard, French's or like. Whatever mustard companies out there, if someone listens and works for a mustard company and you want to get a raise, go into your boss's office or send them a Skype Zoom call or some shit and be like, we need to rebrand our packaging because that shit, oh, that shit is whack. We got, we got upsets to talk about. Like, we already <laughs> got to have these conversations right now. Like, honey mustard, first of all, is just... Is just obliterating right now. Like, they're, oh, they're cool. leading by a solid four percentage points. Honey ketchup? mustard? Yes. Honey mustard is leading with 30%. Dog, ketchup is in last place. <laughs> nah, see, that's... <laughs> like, your audience must... Like, they're good politically and shit like that. Like, they're very up-to-date. And I like that they're, like, independent thinkers. And Dog, it's ketchup very... is OD regular. Like, you have nah. it on everything. Like, the thing that you're using to talk about it to make it sound good is actually the exact thing about it, which is why it's last in the poll, which is like, it's the default. It's the go-to in a normal situation. It goes on everything. It's just like, whatever, like it's just part of a meal. It's not, but that's why it gets overlooked. It gets overlooked as like being the greatest condiment of all time. And your audience always wants the role player. It's the role player dog. That's what it is. You're, you're telling 2,989 people right now that they're bugging. Although your, I will say your this audience is outside the box thinkers and they want to think of some next shit. They don't want to just look at the no, obvious and they, take that. They shit. disagree with me all the time in these polls. I'm just lucky enough where they agree with me on honey mustard right now. And they agree with me on French toast, which is I did not expect that dog oh. pancake is in last place, too, which I think is crazy, too, because pancake to me is ahead of waffle. Yeah, no, see, this is why, again, I don't want to shit on your audience because I love every single one of them. But, like, they're not going to take the standard answer. You know, they're not going to take the CNN choice, which is yeah, ketchup. No, no, no. But here's why, here's why that doesn't make sense. Because right now they're agreeing with me. Honey mustard, number one. French toast, number one. That's what I like. That's what they like. But mo- more often than not, whatever I like is not the thing they like. More often than not, I'm disappointed in the polls. I'm like, they don't agree with me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I just Corin think is distraught by the poor showing for ketchup and pancake right now. Because <laughs> people just don't, they don't know. Like if they gave shit a chance, they don't know. It's an they opinion, don't, They bro. don't know. Like people shitting on me with, with ketchup on eggs, are bugging. Like they've never came to my crib. Yeah, and had well, me make them a fucking English muffin and put some buttery ass eggs on them. With am some I ketchup crazy? On. Am I crazy for saying if you had said on an egg sandwich that that would have flipped it 100%? Because I feel like if you said on ketchup on an egg sandwich, then a lot of the people who were hating on you would be like, oh, that makes sense. But since you just had it on the eggs, period, a lot of people were like, what? I think they would have been – they would have said no to the shit re- like regardless of how I phrased it. I think – they are bugging because ketchup egg sandwich like on a bacon egg and cheese or something you can't beat that it's that you have to have it so well yeah it's well this when we were dead when we go to the deli as kids it'd be like let me get a bacon egg and cheese salt pepper ketchup everybody says salt pepper ketchup automatic you see on your shit it's like someone from out of town would think like oh is his name like steven pines clip like klein or some shit like no, motherfucker, that means salt, pepper, ketchup. Like, it's just like, there's some things that you just know. There's like, if you start a new job and everything's abbreviated and they have all these like code words and like quick fixes and shit like that, it takes time to understand those shits. And 
we got to catch the audience up to speed on a lot of things. <laughs> and this is what I'm doing with like ketchup on eggs, egos. If you put the butter and syrup in the right spot and cut off the edges, trust me, I'm not going to steer you guys wrong. Like, just believe the shit I'm telling you. You know what? What's crazy is that when you go to the frozen pizza aisle, every single choice you make is going to be wildly different than whatever else. Like, all those options are very different. Like, the pizza is night and day. It tastes very different. But if you go to, like, the waffle part, most of the waffles will taste the same. Like, most, like the budget waffles versus the Eggo waffles, like, a lot of them are really similar. Yeah, I was just having this discussion with someone the other day because there was a funny meme going around on the internet, and it said, it was a picture, oh, I sent it to you, it was the one of, like, the bootleg Jordan with the 45, like raising his hand yeah, up to yeah, the audience. Yeah, that was so funny. And it was that, uh, that's from a movie, right? That's gotta be from a movie. Probably or some shit. But like it was like, uh, mom, can we just stay home and watch the end of the last dance? And she's like, I already got the last dance at home. And it's just some budget ass shit. Like sometimes the store brand shit could hold its own with like an egos or something, but there's always gonna be some TJ Maxx martial effects to it. Like something's gonna be wrong. Like dog, toilet paper. Toilet paper, the expensive versus the the cheap. Oh, the Night cheap shit. One hundred. You're gonna get some leftover little white like shits chilling in your butt. Like it's just straight up like almost sandpaper. Like they seriously. should they should take away toilet paper from the labeling and put almost sandpaper. It's one of those you like you think you're good money because you're like all right I gotta compensate for this pee in the hood shit and like make it extra fluffier in my hand. And then you go to wipe your ass, and your fingers will just go straight through those motherfuckers. <laughs> and then you're just fingering your butt with those things. Like, you, there's no getting around. You could take the whole roll of some dollar store toilet paper. Your finger's going to end up in your butt. Like, somebody, it's a guarantee. Somebody said, some comedian said, you're never too poor for the good toilet paper. And I think that's so true. Like, getting some, some Charmin versus some budget brand, it's like the yeah. Charmin, it just feels so much nicer. Oh, yeah, it's night and day, but, like, sometimes duty calls, no pun intended. You're going on a camping trip, and someone, that's all they got. And sometimes they're out of the toilet paper because of the toilet paper thing that just happened with COVID-19 where everybody was buying toilet paper. Mad people got the budget ones and were just happy to have anything. Yeah, and then sometimes it's like, you know, you get what you wish for, and you got a handful of dookie fingers. (laughs) Dog, they're, uh, they just announced that Johnson & Johnson is going to stop selling the baby powder that feels oh, mad good. Oh, good. It's about time. They probably yeah. gave cancer to about every person in this freaking country. They said Johnson & Johnson will stop selling talcum-based baby powder in the U.S. and Canada after paying out billions of dollars in lost legal battles over claims the product causes cancer. Jesus. Yo, it really is crazy, but like... I, I've yet to find a replacement that's that feels that good though. Like that's the problem. Is like you might give yourself cancer, but nothing will make your balls feel like better. Like it just gives you this fresh breath of like chili, like I know. And I've said that to you. I, I, like or or my brother for that's like he's his feet get like clammy when he puts them in his shoes and shit and like he'll bless the like his shoes with those baby powder. And I'm like, yo, like that shit is really bad for you. And he's like I sort of don't give a fuck. Like it makes my feet <laughs> feel like too good. You know? It's like yeah. yeah, somebody who's a smoker who's just like, I know this is killing me, but like, goddamn, I love it. Like that's I I hear him on the baby powder because yeah, like nothing it, on a on a hot summer day, ball in for like two and a half hours, take a shower, get out. I'm saying, what are you gonna do? You got to put a little bit of baby powder on the ball area. Like you got to just bless your balls real quick. That's almost like some shit that, like, Woody Johnson or whoever Johnson should, like, they should get in trouble for that because they, they have did. billions of dollars in lost legal Yeah, I know, battle. but, like, like oh, outside of the law. Well, not even prison, but, like, the fact that they made that shit, like, before they even put it to market, they must have had some scientists and doctors, like, this shit could really fuck people up. And they're like, uh, I, I think they had no idea. Oh, really? It, like, the whole... The way all everything works is like people just kind of like stumble across trying to do stuff and then like they'll do something and be like, oh, no, I guess this is good. And then like we only learned after years and years and years and like some people getting cancer and then finally they studied it and they were like, oh, so you use this every day of your life? You were using this baby? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
oh, well, it turns out the area where you were using it is where you got cancer. Like, yeah. it, people never, it's not like they went into it thinking, like, oh, this is going to be dangerous. They were trying to solve a problem. And the problem was like itchy balls and stuff. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess. But I, I don't know. I mean, even like the Flint water crisis shit, like, didn't they try to like take some, like, cut a corner? Yeah, that, to, like, yeah, they def they 100% cut a corner in that. Yeah. You know, they were like, so oh, you know, we'll save money and get the water this way. And like the water just was super poisoned after like a couple months. Ugh. Yeah, that's why it's like to CNN and all these like, media outlets know how badly they're like fucking up people's minds when they're like pawning a candidate candidate like joe biden off on us like do they uh, like do they honestly think that you know when all the candidates are on in play that they're doing a good thing it honestly man it's a generational thing like yeah. as much as we look at joe biden and we're like are you guys serious joe biden Old people look at him and they're like, Joe Biden, yes. I know. It's it's crazy, but that's what it is. Like, they look at Joe Biden and they're like, hey, he was the vice president. He was a senator for so long. Like, he's a statesman. Like, they, they think these silly things of like, oh, you know, and he seems like a normal, nice guy or whatever. Like, they're not paying attention to the fact that he can't speak now. They're not paying attention. <laughs> can't speak now. <laughs> They're not paying attention to the fact that like he voted for the Iraq War and like Wall Street deregulation. Like they don't know about the specific votes. They're just dad, like oh, I like Joe. Like, my dad's like, oh, you know, he lost his son. What he was his wife and his son, or he lost two sons or something. He some lost shit? a lot. He lost in like a car crash or something. He lost his wife and yeah. and and then later on he had lost his son recently. Actually, lost his son to cancer. Like, and he was yeah. trying to make the argument that, like, oh, he's got empathy and shit like that. I was like, okay, that's great. It's very sad that, like, he lost his son all this shit happened. But, like, that doesn't just mean you should be president. No, that's – exactly. <laughs> that's not an argument to be president because you could – if he wants to make the argument in that direction, like, oh, he's been through a lot so he has empathy, like, that's a reason for him to be president. You can make the same argument in the other direction where you say, damn, he went through a lot of tragedy. He probably is not – he's probably a little off mentally because yeah. anybody would be after something that much. Yeah. You could make the exact opposite argument. It's like that's just not an argument to be present. I know. Oh, it's um, it's weird, man. And like, the like, I didn't really see what Pelosi said, but like, when she called Trump fat and people were like showing her love for that shit, like, fuck her too. I saw. <laughs> like, I saw super mixed reactions. I saw some people were like, "Oh my God, slay queen, yes," yeah. and then other people were like, "You're fat shaming, and that's not okay." Oh. It was yeah. like a mix of both people being stupid. It's like everybody shut up. Like the, you were talking about this earlier, but like I when I see a Twitter fight, I'm always like shut up. Like what are you doing? Why are you fighting on Twitter? Like what's I, wrong with you? Go do something. You're fighting on Twitter? That's what you're going to do. You're going to fight on Twitter. Who care? You're not going to change that person's mind. Whoever the hell you're talking to about whatever the hell you're talking to them about, you're not changing their mind and they're not well, changing your mind. So why are you, like, sniping back and forth, and why are you calling people names and, like, trying to be all standoffish? Like, as if this matters. Like, what are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? That's Nobody should I'm engage saying. in a Twitter fight ever again from now until the end of time. Yeah, take, yeah that's a fucking declaration. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> all right, well, I will give everybody the final results <clears throat> I'm still upset, and I, I'll take that to the grave about your fucking audience and the people who listen to this shit. Is like, yeah, but bro, I they disappoint me all the time with these polls too. You know that. So more often than not, I'm like, how the hell did they make this? How did how did they come to this conclusion? Because it's like, here's my thing: is like, they're so against, you know, what they think yeah. is just normal, and they want us to believe like ketchup is the shit. But there's some things. <laughs> That they've are agreed just the with shit. you mad times though mad times they've agreed with you too people are sort of against me on my food takes and they're sort of nah, bugging. No, it's just that you remember more when they don't agree but there are many times where we've done polls and they agreed with you and disagreed with me and i even like texted you the next day like yo you kind of got it like you told me the poll was going to be like that and it was like that there were many times where that's happened
where you were like, it's going to go like this, bro, I'm telling you. And I was like, no, it's not going to go like that. And then we would do the poll, and you were right. And I was like, yo, you were right. The poll went like that. But just some, like, honey mustard is not, like, ketchup is, ke- like, ke- it's ketchup. Like, the conversation begins after ketchup. Dog, that's not an argument. You're not making an argument right there. What There's you're like- saying is, like, the default shit is the best shit. No, it's not. It's the default shit. Okay, you sway you swayed me with that statement right there a little bit because like yeah, ketchup is sort of point, just standard bro. shit. First of all, let's just get something out of the way right now, real quick, just so that you understand. Like this will calm you down a little bit, I think. Like nobody dislikes ketchup. Nobody dislikes ketchup. There are like four people on the whole planet who don't like ketchup, but they're not giving that shit its proper. It's like Tim Duncan, motherfucker's got five championships, but all he did was just like back you down in the post. And they I'll hit give, some bank I'll shot give, shit on it. Yes, I'll give you that ketchup is Tim Duncan. I will not give you that ketchup <laughs> is Michael Jordan. But I'll give you Tim Duncan. That well, shit what's Honey Duncan. Mustard then? Honey Mustard's got to be some shit that's lower than Tim Duncan. It's definitely nah, not. Honey Mustard's on some LeBron shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're bugging. You're bugging. Honey Mustard's I'm some Robert Murray shit. Like, it's got, <laughs> it's got its six rings or whatever. And it's in its big one. shots. But it's not, it's not it's not even, like, top 50 NBA players type shit. All right, well, what about French toast? Where does French toast fall in this scale? French toast is, like... <laughs> Don't hit me with it's something. Like a John Stockton. Like, back-to-back <laughs> NBA finals. <laughs> Mad good point guard. No, no, I'm sorry. It's like a Chris Paul. Like a Chris Paul type of shit. No, he doesn't even have a ring. Yeah, French toast... French toast doesn't French have toast. a ring. French toast has got at least like three rings, no, dog. No, fuck no. <laughs> ketchup is was a dynasty. Ketchup was an yeah. OG dynasty. French toast is like Wilt Chamberlain or some shit. Like that's what. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think as much as I love French toast, as much as I'll swear by that shit, and like you could have a banging French toast. It's never like it might have won a championship in college, like on some mellow shit. <laughs> Like back in the day when like you diners and shit were popping. French toast, it is not mellow. <laughs> that shit never that shit never won a chip. I'm mellow sorry. Mellow perpetually disappoints. French toast rarely disappoints. All I'm oh, saying French toast is like Nah. I'm an I'll 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 grant you that French toast is not Michael Jordan. But French toast is definitely like Wilt Chamberlain or Kareem Abdul Jabbar or Bill Russell, like Loki, one of the best ever, but doesn't get his due just because it's old school. Nah, I don't think so, man. I don't think it's one Number, chip. Dog, it's it's kind of crushing the field right now. It's four points up. It's four points up on yeah. waffles. That's good. If you put Mello in a poll, I'm sure he'd win a lot. He was very popular. But, like, I love French toast. I'm not knocking that shit. But I don't think it's won a championship yet. Like, I need – there's no <laughs> so, French toast factory. Dude, there's a pink – the Who's the MJ of breakfast foods? Of Like, out of those things? No, in general, like forget just the poll. In general, the MJ breakfast foods. I don't I mean, actually. I know what you're gonna say, and you're right. Don't even say it. I was gonna say if you're talking to a New Yorker, it's bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, yeah. I'll give that's the MJ of breakfast foods. I think. But like, if you talk to someone in California, they'll say a breakfast burrito, and they they could be they could be close with that shit because I've had some breakfast burritos that are fucking banging. Yeah, because it's not like it's it's like it's like Mexican food where it's like it's similar. Like a breakfast burrito versus a bacon, egg, and cheese, like you're in the same universe. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. It's like a fajita versus a burrito. Yes. Or, you know what I mean? Like a, a soft shell taco versus a hard shell taco. Yeah. It's the or same. Or a quesadilla. It, you know what yeah. I mean? Like similar. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And you know it's that good when like East Coast and West Coast have their own variation of that shit. You know? Yeah, absolutely. But That's anyways, why French so- toast isn't like on some universally like won a championship shit because there's too many different variations when man. you can't even when you can't even be the king in your own shit like there's hollow french toast there's like strawberry french toast there's some crusty ass bread french like there's different types of french toast within french toast but that that's- might be one of the reasons why it's crushing dog see that's like you just hit me with like damn this player is mad versatile like that's what that is that's that's like he plays offense, he plays defense, he averages like three steals a game. Like he's really good in every he's he's great but at assists. But then pancakes could OD make that argument too. You can have some chocolate chip pancakes. Yeah. Well, 
I agree that pancakes, sh- uh, it's a crime that pancakes are below waffle on the pole. Yeah. Let's just keep it real about that. Like, the fact that pancakes are at 29% and waffles are at 33 Waffles are beating pancakes by four percentage points? Nah. You tell you, like, waffles is so fucking single lane, can't do shit. You have to put shit on top of waffles to make that experience better. You can't do, like, a a, stu- like a stuffed strawberry. Like, you have to add the strawberries and whipped cream on top of the waffles. So that's how you know you're just on some bland, plain-ass Wait, shit. I'm, I'm about to hit you with a point right now that's sort of devastating, and it just occurred to me. You're right. Like, you, if somebody eats just a plain waffle with nothing on it, and I'm saying no no syrup, no butter, no nothing. Like, that's super questionable. But honestly, even though a, a pancake with nothing on it is better than a waffle with nothing on it, a pancake with nothing on it is still sort of questionable. Like, you need at least, like, a little bit of butter on that and a little bit of syrup on that to just have the pancake, like, regular. But if you give me a piece of French toast and say you can't have anything on it, it's still banging. Yeah, because it's like been in some egg sauce. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a really that's a, that's a fair point. I'll give you that. <laughs> shit. That's a good point. That's a good point. We're like on this show. We're honestly like foodologists. Yeah, I mean, but 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 rightfully so. I mean, I want people to exp- I've had some good experiences eating some banging ass food. And I want people to experience the ego shit. So, like, tweet me your photos of you eating, like, cut off the sides and make that shit a square. Your whole middle, everything, it's like a reservoir. Like, everything just fucking flows to the sewer and just goes in the middle. Fucking you're going to be so hype if somebody eats an ego like that and sends you the picture. You're going to be like, yes. Because I'm, t- I'm, like, I'm right about this shit, man. So, like, <laughs> fucking do yourselves a favor. Like, stop Stop fucking doubting me, man. Like, I've put too much time into the shit that I eat, you know? So, like, if you're eating a mushroom pizza or some weary shit, like, don't do that. Just have a banging-ass cheese pizza and some pepperoni or some shit. Like, don't get weird and you start know, putting other shit pe- on it. I'm not a big pepperoni fan. I know that's that's controversial. I didn't mean to drop a bomb on everybody here. But I'm not a big pepperoni fan, man. Like, if, if you're saying, Kyle, you're going to have some pizza... Like, go ahead and rank it for me. First of all, I'm going Sicilian number one because it's, like, thick. I love thick Sicilian. Yeah. Um, But then after that, I'll say, listen, I love just cheese pizza, but you could bless me with any toppings, just not anchovies or pepperoni. Damn, no pepperoni like that? No, I've never been a big pepperoni guy. Like, honestly, you could throw vegetables on it. You could throw mushrooms on it. You could throw whatever. Actually, Hawaiian is... Okay, Hawaiian. I, know, I, I knew you were gonna say that. We've had this conversation before. Like, it's funny how people they have really strong opinions on it, one way or the other. Either people love a uh, Hawaiian pizza or hate it. I'm the only person in the world that has a middle ground opinion. Where I'm like, it's okay, but it's not crazy good. It's not crazy bad. It's just okay. Yeah. If you're getting pizza, just get the shit how it was meant to be. Cheese pizza, like that's what pizza was. Sometimes you gotta have a little something, something on it, man. But like, little... if you're throwing like barbecue chicken on it, just have barbecue chicken then for dinner that night. Like, you don't have go you to ever... Italy and have start bacon, bacon on pizza. Around. Have you ever had bacon on pizza? I mean, there used to be a spot. I think it was in Rochelle. It was, they would put like, it was like a white sauce. It might have been ranch, and like buffalo chicken and bacon. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was blue cheese. It was blue oh. cheese on. Dog, that shit with like the cheese and like the thing and the oh and the oh. There's some <laughs> there's some combinations, man. That like these places figure out that like just once all the squishiness is going on in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Oh, it's damn! Weird. Now I'm hungry. We've been talking about food this entire damn podcast. I'm upset at this fucking shit, man. I'm I, I'm not fucking with the audience tonight. Yeah, but you know what? You win some, you lose some, man, because you have won a lot of these polls in the past. And I've there I've been handed some major L's in these polls where I was convinced of something 100%, and then I just got obliterated. And I was like, what? That can't possibly be. There was one that I still, I don't remember what it was, but, like, I'm still not over it. It was, like, <laughs> it was crazy. I was, I knew I was right about that. And then everybody handed me a major L, and my thing, like, flunked. And got, like, next to no support. And I was like, really? 
I forget what it was, but you were like, you were, you were so like, confident. And I was like, no, I'm equally as confident as you that I'm right about it. My shit and, smacked, right? I know exactly what you're talking about, too, but I don't remember what it was. I don't remember what it was either. So put it in the comment section, people. Like, because there was, I forget what it was, but I was so sure, and you were so sure, and I just got smacked. I was like, yeah. damn, really? Joseph remembers. Shout out to Joseph, man. He's been a day one, too. I think he'll, he'll remember that shit. And I think shout, out to, shout out to, shout out to Leon, because he told me, Yo, you're bugging because you're missing out on something that you should have been doing for a while now. But we need to name the show for this time period, Kyle and Quarantine. That's a good. That's a good switch up. Second, he told me that I was like, "Damn, Leon, you killed it, man!" Like yeah. he freaked it. Like that's like that. It's a crime that we haven't done it until right now. Like I'm but gonna then do my shit's gonna be like Tommy John. Now every time someone says quarantine, I should be getting hit off for like five hours from every person that writes that shit. Try to patent like, it, see if it happens. <laughs> dude, Tom Brady does that shit all the time. Everybody does that shit. They copyright like Evil Empire and stuff like that. Like the Yankees will do that shit. So are why the fuck watch, would Tommy John not do that? Are you gonna watch the golf with uh, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Tiger and Phil? Yeah, I'll probably watch a little of it. They did the the one the other day with Rory McIlroy and Dustin Johnson. They had that. They were carrying their bags. Oh yeah, you told me that shit. But like, fuck them. Like, let them fucking carry their bag for a time. Like, not have some caddy or some shit. Are you kidding me? They get. By the way, those caddies make b -b 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 bread, son. And they get a portion of if they win something, right? Yeah, they're getting they're getting paid. I mean, do the math. Like fifteen percent of a million dollar check. Yeah. That's yeah, hundred fifty thousand dollars. I saw the tiger thing. One of the holes, they can only use one club or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have weird rules. Like they try to make it fun and like switch it up and do weird things like that. But they would like have to putt if like driver was like the only thing they could use or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but they get to pick the club, so they'll probably pick like a seven iron or something. Yeah, that they just plays hole with a seven iron. Yeah, and then they putt with it and stuff. It's not as hard as it sounds, actually. Like you could putt with you I could putt with a wedge easy. You just like blade it. It's oh, pretty really? yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah. Shout but this time here, Pancakes. like you told me, it's been raining like crazy by you. But yeah, for it's, me, it's, it's it's super wet over here. It's been nice for me, and like I'm so set on for the winter, just going somewhere warm, just so I could not be miserable. Because I don't even realize it until like after the fact when it's nice out. Like, damn, um, I was miserable. I was mm -hmm. miserable when it wasn't nice out. Yeah, there's a different Straight mood, up. and like. I know a lot of people that have been going down to Florida for their quarantine because, like, they're practically fucking, like, nothing's happening down there. They're still nah. operating at, like, full capacity. Oh, yeah, they're still operating at, like, full speed, but there's a story that I'm going to cover on my show. I just saw the headline earlier today that they're straight up lying about the number of cases they have. Like, they, oh, fired, they fired a woman whose job was to, like, track it. They fired her because she wouldn't lie and lower the number. Jesus. So they're straight up lying about the number of COVID cases they have. Nothing I'm surprises you, man, me anymore, Like, man. Texas and Florida, like, they're wild. They're just like, fuck it. <laughs> Let's just do whatever. I've seen a lot of, like, once you start questioning, I give people props because they actually held out for a little bit. You know, like, people fucked with Fauci for a while. But then there comes a point where you're going to get the crazies that are like, who is this guy? What's his credit? Like, it's like he's a fucking scientist. And then they start, like... They'll come out with some documentary that, like, is the other side of his argument. Like, there comes a point where people start bringing out, like, the conspiracy theory arguments and, like, yeah, it's making funny a creditable how, person not credible. It's funny how quickly it turned political, right? Like, there yeah. was a time when everybody agreed, like, all right, this is bad. We should probably, like, try to stay home a little bit. But then after, like, maybe three weeks or four weeks, then it just became political. And right-wingers yeah. were like... All right, so we all agree this is all bullshit, right? <laughs> and and it's funny because Trump is still continuing a lot of these policies or like I guess maybe not not as much at the federal level, a lot of it more is at the state level, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just weird how all of a sudden now it's something that people like debate whereas before it was just like we all kind of agreed, okay, a pandemic is a bad thing, we don't want to get the pandemic, probably should stay home as much as possible, but like they're going to try to force everything back. But nobody's going to want to go to the movies. Nobody's going to want to go to the restaurants. And, like, even though you're opening stuff up, 
the economy is going to struggle anyway because people aren't going to go out. Yeah. And then, like, what's the point? If if now more people are going to get the, the sickness, more people are going to get the virus, and the economy is going to tank anyway, then to, like, force it back. Because I don't know about you, but I've seen more and more people, like, out now. Like, oh, there was a 100%. time when you go, when you drive, and nobody would be on the road. Yep. And then now it's like you're starting to see it creep up slowly. But the good news is, around me at least, because obviously I'm in a hard-hit area, people were... I never, if you go to the grocery store, 100% of people are wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. 100% of people. I never in my life did I think I'd see that. Yeah, I, I, I think Molly said it was mandatory out here in Illinois. But to your point, it's gotten to a point where if you see someone without a mask, you're almost like, oh, it must be a Trump supporter or some shit. Like, it's on some shit like that where it's just like all the people not wearing masks are Trump supporters who think this is a hoax, who think, you know, that they're invincible from getting the shit. You saw he's taking uh, taking hydroxychloroquine? Yeah, well, so is he actually taking that shit? He says he's taking it. Because he has it or because he wants to no, prevent it? No, prevent it. So he he read an article about how it like helped in some cases or whatever. Yeah. And he said he's just taking it as a preventative measure. He's been taking it for like a week and a half. But like the evidence is not that great that it's good. Like... There's there's conflicting evidence. Like there's some examples of you know it anecdotally working or whatever. Yeah. But the opposite is true too. That like, like there's some evidence. Like the 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 more rigorous the study, the the less it looks like it's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like mm-hmm. the more evidence that has come out, like some some studies even say it's detrimental. Well, it's- and I think John Oliver even said that they were they did testing at one of the universities. And there were a couple cases that came back that it didn't help them. And they just like threw those cases out and disregarded them. So they didn't um, like factor into their numbers or whatever. Well, there was a Fox host. I'll cover this on my show as well. Neil Cavuto, who basically was like warning the audience. Because if Trump does something, you're going to have the Trump people like bet. I'm going to do it too. Yeah. So Neil Cavuto on Fox was like, if you have like a heart problem or a respiratory problem and you take this drug, it could kill you. It could kill you. Like, and he was mad serious yeah. because he, you know, t- I don't like Trump. I still don't think he realizes that, bro, you're the president. And like, if you say something, a lot of people are going to be like, that's what's up. He's and- kind of, it's so fascinating. When I saw the one shit that he did. When all the truck drivers and everybody was honking while he was talking. And they were clearly doing it because they were against him. They were trying to like interrupt his speech. And he was just like, you hear them? That's for me. They're they're in favor of me right now. They're cheering and they're honking. And they're making all this noise because they're in favor. We're doing a great job. But And then like the news has to put on the same level. Like they have to say Trump now said that they were all honking and making noise in favor of him. When in reality they weren't, but like the fact that you just heard that they were in favor of him makes you just you're confused now, you know? Yes, yeah. like I hate them. Like you're right. Like he's ridiculous, and he says ridiculous things, and he's always obsessed with like his ratings and how he's viewed, yeah. and he tries to make himself seem like he's awesome. But then, like I feel like the media is just as stupid because they always they always try to they be like no, 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 and it's like why like. He's he's the village idiot. Like, why are you even trying to be on some checking stuff? Like, yeah, he's just saying like it's always like the things that don't matter that they want to check him on, like like the ratings and like yep. people are honking for me or whatever. Like, it's always stuff like that where they're like, no, no, no. And it's like, why don't you guys do something that's like not stupid? Like, why don't you focus on something that's not stupid? It's like with I don't know if you saw the Biden thing. I'm going to cover this, too. Probably Biden came up with a nickname for Trump. He calls him, like, President Tweety. Oh, and I was on, like, man. yo, do you not, like, you cannot beat Trump at his game. Yeah. Because this is who he is. Like, this is what he does. His whole life has been that. Like, he's yep. been giving people nicknames since the fetus. Like, since the 1980s, he was giving, like, call, Fat Ted. Like, he was just saying, calling people whatever. You're not like that. Like, you can't, it doesn't, it comes across as insincere and not genuine 
because it's not sincere. It's not genuine. It's, it's like, the same shit with fucking Pelosi, like after his uh, State of the Union, when she stood up and clearly like ripped his yeah. speech. Mm-hmm. I was just like, come on, like, come on. Like what is what it what is this? Like let him be a fucking two year old. Because that's because because Corin, those are the things. Jenk made this point earlier. They don't resist him in any serious way when it comes to policy stuff. So they have to do something to make you think that like they're against them. And so the stuff that they do is all symbolic, like ripping up the speech or doing the like the clap thing, like the condescending well, the clap thing. Saying he's obese, so people can be like, yeah, yeah fuck him. We got him back. It, Exactly, like that, because then people, idiots, will look at that and be like, "I don't like Trump, and she doesn't like Trump either, so I like her." She's it's doing like, a great job. It's like, do you not understand that she just agreed to give him more spying powers? Like, she's in favor of him spying more. Like, did you miss that? Like, did you not? Do you not understand that that's what happened? You don't understand that she approved, you know, his seven hundred billion dollar plus military budget, which is more money than he was even asking for. Do you not understand that? And it's that they don't care. They don't follow the po- the policies because the media doesn't cover it that much. When I heard just, that she straight came out and said that, like, she had to sign off, I think, on, like, the Iraq war. Like, she knew it was a lie or something like that, but had to say yes to it for whatever reason. It was almost just like, what? Like, it's shit that I, I never knew. But, like, you know, like, to come out and just say that you let that shit happen and then lie to us for whatever reason. It's just like, she's, she's just as corrupt as all of them. You know, they're all fucking corrupt. Yep. That's exactly right. And on that depressing note, we're going to call it a day people. So we love y'all. We'll talk to you soon. I'm going to get a pancake shirt for everybody or some shit. Oh, 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 I'm happy you said that because now I want to, I want to actually give the final, final results. Oh, are they finished? Yeah, they're finished. I did 30 minute polls and they're done. So here we go for dipping sauce. The winner is Honey Mustard Bloody. with 30%. Honey Mustard wins. In second place, coming from behind, I think, is Barbecue. Barbecue with 26.4%. Makes no sense. Then, in third place is Ranch with 23.2%. And coming in dead last, Disrespectful Showing for Ketchup, 20.3%. So corn is corn is distraught over that one. I'm honestly a little surprised because if I'm putting it in order for me, I go honey mustard number one. I agree with the crowds on that. Then I go ketchup ranch barbecue. So yeah, ketchup ketchup even has its own little like quirks to it. So like if you hit the 57 on the bottle, that shit is like you get more ketchup. At, like no other shit. Like you can't hit a honey mustard bottle. And then there's like Greg Poupon, which is similar. There's honey Dijon. So people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. All right, now breakfast poll, final results. Damn, French toast pulled away even more, dog. 38% for French toast. By the way, we had over 8,000 votes on both of these polls, like respectively. Like each one had over 8,000. That's a lot of votes. Um, French toast, 38%. Um, Number one. Then we have pancakes. Waffle, waffle number two, 33.1%. I don't agree with that at all. And oh. then pancake number three, twenty eight point nine percent. So for me, here's I what go- I'll do: if someone wants to do this for me, start a GoFundMe for for French Toast Factory. And if we could raise, we probably only need like a hundred thousand or some don't, shit. Don't do this, people. <laughs> they will do it, Corin. Don't do it because he's not going to start. If French, French Toast, Toast is factory. winning like that. That means people really fuck with it. And there's an IHOP, there's a OHOP, there's an international and a fucking. I don't even know what the O and OHOP stands for. Original House of Pancakes. There's an OHOP, really? There was an OHOP in White Plains. It's actually like pretty popping, I think. I thought it was IHOP in White no, Plains. No, there's an IHOP and an OHOP. Yeah, OHOP is a big thing, too. How am I just learning this, that there's an IHOP and an OHOP? Yeah, there's an OHOP. There's a Waffle House, and there's a Huddle House, which I think Huddle House also does waffles, too. But there's no French toast shit, man. The closest one I told you was in like Shanghai or wherever the fuck it was. Let's get a French toast chain started. And when you type French toast factory and it might have been an actual factory, not like a restaurant called French toast factory. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? Yeah. So, but anyway. All right, guys. We love you. We'll talk to you soon. Everybody stay safe out there. Peace.